doing a little bit of decorating. I have not felt like doing decorating in a long time, but I was playing the Smith household, or I was getting ready to, and I was just got a wild hair, and I'm like, you know what? Albane deserves a decorated home. And so that's what I did. Um, Albane Smith is... At one point she was part of the gentry, her mother was a peasant, her father was second or third son, and so she was like part of the gentry class before the war. After the war she was indentured and her husband was imprisoned. She managed to smuggle away her only son who lived in Tenby. But yeah, she was just kind of stuck. And then the last round that I played in Adirin, she rolled a Ross to have like a distant relative move in. So I took that to be Matthew Smith, her husband's much, much younger sister, Lidlene. And so Lidlene actually came back and is also indentured because the entire Smith family was indentured. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Um, Albine is a knowledge of fortune sim. One of the things she does like is she rolled for Elder Scrolls as a style, which makes me so happy because I can use all of my Elder Scrolls conversions, like that couch. Uh, she wanted to be a city planner, that obviously never happened. She's interested in sports, specifically soccer, but I don't have a default replacement for soccer and I actually have a hider for that, so I don't know quite what I'm going to do for her there. If you guys know of a default replacement of the soccer thing, definitely let me know. Uh, I've got that she's somewhat sloppy, she likes purple, glass, kind of natural materials, so lots of woods and stones. She's modest, chaste, blunt, has no sense of humor, and is competitive, so an interesting lady, to say the least. Her husband basically held out in the jail for as long as possible so that she wouldn't be forced to remarry because she is indentured, which aren't Blumenthal, super hypocritical of you, but whatevs, we all know it. We all know it. And she specifically was indentured to the Caselow family before I kind of changed how I did that. So she kind of is, but like, I changed it up a little bit to where Arndt Blumenthal technically, if you're indentured, you are indentured to the crown, and the crown can lend you out as it sees fit. So, yeah. Uh, you can see here I'm building kind of a bedroom here with curtains because this is a very small apartment lot. I actually built this lot. Like, I recorded building this lot a couple, I want to say two years ago? That's how long it's been now, oh my goodness. I'll try to remember to put that link down below, but yeah, I built this kind of peasant lot when I was doing a challenge and finally getting around to playing some of the sims who lived here. But this particular home is very small, so to fit two sims I had to make sure that there was space downstairs for her to live in, essentially. You will notice that the roads are the Maxis roads, and the doors are not medievally, and I don't know why, but whenever I convert a lot, like I build a lot and then I change it to apartment zones, it changes the mailbox, because I had that like the medievally colors, because A, it doesn't change it to the apartment mailbox, don't know why, but B, it changes the roads and the doors no matter what I do, so I just ignore it. Yeah. I decided to give them kind of a little outhouse outside. There is, this lot does have like public bathrooms, just because I knew the property, each of them was so small that like having enough bathrooms could be a problem, but they also have an outdoor one, because why not? And yeah, I'm just kind of picking out different things that I think will suit. I end up putting a sink outside, because I'm just like, I don't think I'm gonna have space for that. But it works out, it works out. It's actually all being there in the backyard. I was taking screenshots for their headshot things and just left her outside. She's fine. She's a wiry old lady. She'll live. I'm actually recording this voiceover after I did the ending voiceover and actually after I've already played the household because why do things in order? And her round was interesting to say in the least. Uh, they're kind of boring, but their neighbors are interesting, so it was funny to kind of see her interacting. She spends a lot of time in the, a lot of time in their laundry area, which is just a hot tub. 
and I thought that was kind of funny. And I gotta try out that Bannock item, which is what's on the counter. I downloaded it ages ago, I've never used it, and it's actually, it makes pizzas, which is great. So, she got to make pizzas, I'm sure she was very thrilled. Now, I really honestly don't know why I felt the need to decorate this lot, like, every now and then I just, I'm like, you know what, I, I need to, I need to decorate. Especially with Albine, like, she's one of the sims I've had, she, like, she was born in game. I played her parents, they were really interesting, and she just interests me as well. I'm really excited for her to potentially be bought out of her indenturedness, that's a word, by her son, hopefully. Um, I haven't quite figured out how that's going to work, but now that Tenby is attached to this part of the world, obviously Joshua's not going to want to leave his mom as a servant, especially not when she's as old as she is, but at the same time, I don't know if Albane's gonna be like, listen, it's a waste of your money, I'm fine, it's fine, like, I don't, I don't know if she would actually let him do that, because she can be very self-sacrificing self when it comes to her family, which is interesting, because she started out when she was a younger sim, like, her parents were not the most well-received gentry sims, because her mother, again, was a peasant, and her father married just because he couldn't have the woman that he did love because she was married to his brother, and his wife, Raswitha, who is Albine's mother, was in love with the brother that was married to the wife, so it was kind of like a weird second choice kind of thing, but they, they ended up getting along really well, and it worked out. As a side note, I really need to download the updates of those rabbit hutches because they were glitching, so I do end up removing them when I play, but I have all the updates, like I have all the, all the updates for all the things. I just don't want to pull it all out and then reinstall it and have to remember where everything was, and so I'm just being lazy, and that's on me. That's my fault. 100%. I acknowledge it. But the rabbit worked, so I just left the rabbit in the yard. Because it doesn't really need that. I mean, it doesn't really do anything on its own, but whatevs. They can have a rabbit in their yard. She can do what she wants. I was trying to think of, like, how to decorate. Because the way I'm having, like, the indentured servants work is they basically get, like, a low-paying low job, like, slacker career, cooking career. They have job stoppinators, so they're not allowed to move up any higher. And since the pay is so low, it's not really much. I count that as like a living stipend that they get for just basic expenses, but it's it's nothing to write home about. And that's just because I don't want to like send. I, I don't play an integrated neighborhood. It's pretty detailed, but it's not that integrated. So in my mind, they're going to go work at like the castle or they're working fields or something like that. And, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. I don't want to play that. I'm not interested in making her work all day. I'll just send her to work and then I can pretend it's not happening. <laughs> I do end up having to move that phone though because I use some OMSPs and I forget that there's just, the teal ones don't, like they block sims. Which I bet if I put them in walkthrough blocks it would be fine, but always forget to do that. I'm mostly just looking for like interesting bits of paper and things like that. She is literate because she was you know, part of the gentry class before, so she is a literate sim. And like I said, she wanted to be a city planner. She's always been interested in building things, so I think she lost a lot of that once, you know, her husband was in prison and later died and then she didn't know if she'd ever see her son again, but now that the possibility is there that she's going to see Joshua again, she'll be able to have that relationship even though they're of differing classes now. I just, I think it maybe sparked something in her, like, remembering, oh hey, I used to love this. I did have to have a long think, though, about, like, the Tenby Sims. I'm like, technically, like, Joshua, for example, if he's a smith and Lena Lane got marked as indentured, shouldn't he be indentured as well, but I think the way that it's working in the world and the way Arndt is kind of interpreting things is like, the Sims and Tenby are no longer adherent citizens, 
so they wouldn't fall under his laws, because he's also trying to, I'm sure, avoid as much political fallout as possible, because Adirin is a new kingdom, Art of Blumenthal is probably not respected by kings outside, like, foreign kings and things, because he was an indentured servant himself, and he rose up in rebellion and he won, but, like, it's hard to see them finding his claims as valid, even though he basically raised the old kingdom to the ground. It's like, it doesn't exist anymore. This is a totally new thing. I can see him just being cautious with the Tenby Sims and be like, oh, well, they're just, they're, they're something else. They're special. Kind of how Penrith is a no man's land. They are also not citizens of Tenby, but the difference with Penrith is anybody who was allowed to kind of be exiled to Penrith, which is just a no man's land strip of territory that's between Adirin and another kingdom. All those Sims had to formally renounce any claim that they had to any titles, any lands, anything to do with Adirin, Galibud, you name it. So they're not much of a threat. The Tenby Sims escaped. They got away. And some of those include Sia Kenton and her son Taelson, who absolutely in no way, shape, or form, he didn't revoke anything. And he's technically a legitimate heir. Because he has an older brother, Cledwin, but Cledwin, you know, renounced his right to the land, so Cledwin technically wouldn't have much leg to stand on. And he also doesn't have any desire to be royal at all. But I also don't see Sia pushing that at all with her son after, she, after everything that happened. Like, I think everybody just kind of wants things to be chill. And it helps that the Tenby Sims do have magic on their side. So they're definitely a little bit more protected than if they didn't have that. Because that also, any supernaturals, any magic, like that was not acceptable prior to the war. And, you know, a few years after the war, it wasn't either. But now, well, there's a whole subset of these Sims, and they're here. We know who they are. We can be weird about it, or we can accept it. And again, Arndt is just like, let's just kind of accept that this is a thing. Let's be a little chill. It can make them a little bit different. It could make Adirin kind of stand out from other kingdoms as well, because most other kingdoms also have a policy of, like, not accepting the supernaturals, so... I haven't thought too much about it, I, I just mostly make stuff up as I go. But that was one thing that I kind of had to really think out of, like, okay, well, if Tenby is... Because the main reason Tenby's not separate anymore is I feel like having multiple subhuds really destroyed my last save of Adirin. No one can tell me for sure, but like, there was no corruption. I did all my due diligence and it was within two rounds. It was just totally messed up and I just, I feel like, and sometimes it was certain subhuds that if I tried to open them, they would crash. And I had like nine or ten and I just, I feel like that did it. Still don't have proof, but just... I didn't trust it anymore, so this time when I built Adirin, I was much more selective about what kind of subhoods there'd be. I basically changed my whole noble structure instead of having, like, the dukedom of such and such will have its own subhood. Now, the castle structures were set up more like Versailles, where to be seen, to be important, you have to live at the castle. You have to pay the king to live there. You have to be seen, you have to be known. That's Arndt's way of maintaining control, but also my way of excusing them not living in their, like, family manners. We'll see. I mean, I might do one more subhood that's, like, all the noble family manners, but, like, one subhood, and I'll just separate up your trees so they don't look like they're in the same area. But I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm mostly just plunking down decorations, which is why I'm babbling. We're almost there. As you can see, I tried to keep it fairly plain, fairly simple, but you know, with a few flourishes here or there. I didn't want to make her house completely boring. And then as I said kind of at the beginning, I do a little walkthrough where there's definitely a voiceover that was filmed before this, so who knows what I said. 
I might have repeated myself again. I should have recorded this voiceover before or directly after doing that. I didn't, and I make no apologies for that. Because I am a stellar YouTuber. <laughs> so yeah, that's just about it. I'm going to go ahead and cut out, and then I'm going to cut back in in a minute, and it'll be a surprise to all of us as to what I say. Okay, so we have finished decorating. I did stop the recording before I finished because I could see how long it was getting. Also, I have not recorded the voiceover for that, so this is this is a cart before the horse situation, but the horse is still going after the cart, or before the cart? I don't know, words are hard. Uh, basically, I just finished decorating the Smith residence. This is an apartment lot. I don't know why the road replacement for whatever reason on apartment lots just goes back to this. If anybody knows how I can make that stop, it would be great because when I made the apartment lot, like before I shifted it over, like it had the right road and I even moved everybody out, corrected the road, moved them back in and it still did that. It also does that with the mailbox. I, I don't, I don't know. And I even recolored the mailbox. I'm like, well, if you're going to make me have this mailbox, I'll make it match. No, it won't. So yeah. Decorated the Smith house, which I'm sure I've already told you who it's for, so let's just get into it. There's this residence here. It's actually one of the smaller ones. We've got two other livable apartment lots. And just since we're here, there is a hot tub and restrooms as well over here. Just because these are small lots, and like I want people to be able to go to the bathroom. And there's also a charcoal pit. And that's not a workable pantry. I was just looking to see if it was, but it, it's not. There's just like laundry set up and things. But anyways, here is the final house. So, um, Abilene, Abilene, oh my gosh, words are hard today. Albane is this lady right here. Hi, Albane. Albane, Albane. I think I like Albane, Albane. Some of these I've heard in my head, like, or I read them, but like I don't know how they would sound phonetically, and then I have to say them out loud for the first time. I'm like, huh, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> but yeah, she is an indentured servant. She lives with her sister in law, who is much, much younger than she is, uh, Lidaline, who, where did, where did you go? Oh, she's over here. Lidaline, why, why are you over here? Come here. Come stand here so we can all admire your face. So, Lidaline is Matthew Smith's sister. Matthew is married to Albine, and they have a son, Joshua, who actually went to Tenby, and so this whole time she's never known, you know, she made arrangements for him to get out okay, but like, she wasn't for sure. So that's gonna be something that's happening, and she gets to reunite with her son now. Um, to that end, there are indentured servants, so it's pretty sparse in here in terms of decorating. Uh, she rolled to like have Elder Scrolls as her um, like descriptor style. So I did like the Morrowind couch, a couple of these are, I know that is too. Just I wanted things that look like they belonged in the Elder Scrolls world, whether it's Morrowind, Skyrim, any, any of them, like that was the goal. And yeah, I really like how this turned out. I haven't wanted to decorate recently, but I just felt like decorating her house for some reason, and so I did. She's a little bit messy. Um, I had to click away for a minute to see what else she liked. So she wanted to be a city planner. That never happened, of course, but it was a goal of her. She's a knowledge of fortune sim. She has a sports hobby, and she apparently likes soccer, which I don't have a default replacement for, and I think it's I have it hidden, so I might have to figure out a way for that to happen. 
uh, her traits are modest, chaste, but, but I, I'm gonna skip this because I feel like I'm going to probably say it in the voiceover. I don't know why I'm saying it all again. Ignore me. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird recording this after. I was gonna wait, but I don't know. I just I just want to get it over with. My game's been crashing a lot, so let's just let's just get this over with. So this is our kitchen. Very simple. Seating for two. There is a computer here just because she did want to be a city planner, so I like the idea that she still reads about it and is invested even though it's never going to happen. TV area. It's not a two bedroom apartment lot, so I built an area for Albine. Albine? I'll figure out how I want to pronounce it later. I don't know. I kind of made her a room with curtains, and there is a tub in here, but of course, if she anyone tries to use that tub, they're going to yell at whoever is in the house, but I think it'll be fine. And then upstairs is Lidaline's space. Definitely not as decorated, mostly because I got a little tired, but also just, I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling her yet. As we go on, I might decorate it more. She is into sculpting, so I want to include that. This is going to be where she puts like some pots and things that she's created. She likes maritime, so it's built in. She also has a little bucket toilet here. And then outside, they just have the laundry bin, they have a rabbit, and there's another toilet here, the which is actually pulled from the witcher. And then they have a little wash sink outside because it fits, but yeah, it's a very, very humble lot, I would say, but I'm really happy with it. I really like the downstairs. I just got tired out towards the end when I knew that the video was going to be long and I also needed to do this upstairs space. But I did put some decorations, mostly wall decorations. It's like a little moon and a rug and curtains. So it's not completely barren, but yeah, I definitely did get tired of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I know that for a while there, decorating was like my thing and then I got out of it and hey, that's just, that's The Sims life. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. If you enjoyed this, give it a like comment down below whatever you feel like doing but I do really appreciate it when you guys like the videos because more people can come and join in my madness and there's not a lot of sims 2 players these days so everyone that I can find the better and I will see you in the next one